In this video, we'll explore some ideas for getting better voice over IP performance across an amateur radio emergency data network. VoIP phones are very useful tools for communicating during an emergency because everyone already knows how to use a telephone to make voice contacts. Even in a grid down situation, in the absence of normal landline or cellular telephone service, Ham radio operators can deploy off-grid phone services that work the same way that people are familiar with. First, what is voice over IP, or VoIP? In simple terms, VoIP involves sending voice signals in the form of data packets across a network. To accomplish this, you can use special computer software, often called a soft phone, or you can use dedicated VoIP phone devices that convert analog voice signals to digital packets, which are transferred over the network and then decoded as audio at the destination. In the examples that follow, VoIP phones are connected to Arden radios, which gives each phone an IP address that's reachable on the wider mesh network. A typical VoIP implementation uses the client-server architecture, with VoIP phones as clients, which connect to each other through a PBX server. All of the network routing is handled by the Arden nodes, which calculate the least cost route between devices using the optimized link state routing protocol. The PBX, or Private Branch Exchange Server, handles all of the call details, such as creating and maintaining connections between phones. Since the PBX manages this information and has quite a bit of computing power, it can provide a number of other features, too. For example, even the simplest PBX can usually provide phone extension numbers, interactive voice response menus, voicemail, putting a call on hold, transferring a call to another extension, connecting several phones into a conference call, recording call audio, logging call history, and many, many other useful features. Let's look at some rules of thumb for getting the best VoIP call quality on your network. There are several different factors that determine call quality, including network latency, jitter, packet loss, and available bandwidth. This is a complex subject, but in this video I'm going to oversimplify it by focusing only on one of the factors that determine call quality. I'll focus on network latency because it's one of the most important factors and it's also one of the easiest things to measure using tools that are already available on Arden nodes. As a general rule, when you speak into the phone, it should take no longer than 150 milliseconds for the end user to hear you. A latency greater than 300 milliseconds makes VoIP basically unusable, so our goal should be to have an average one-way latency under 150 milliseconds. Every Arden node has the ping tool for measuring network latency. This is a command line tool, so you'll need to log into your node using Telnet or SSH. Ping works by sending an Internet Control Message Protocol packet called an echo request, and then it receives an echo reply, which means that Ping will display the round-trip latency rather than the one-way latency. In the example shown here, we're sending 100 pings so we can get the average latency calculated over a large sample size. These results show that there's a 2% packet loss on this network link, and the average round-trip latency is about 100 milliseconds, so it's an average one-way latency of around 50 milliseconds. So far, so good, 
But how do you know which route your VoIP packets will take between nodes across the network? Fortunately, every Arden node includes the trace route tool, and this is also a command line tool. So you'll need to log into your node using Telnet or SSH. If you want to show the route between phone number one's node and the PBX, you can log in to node number one and trace route to the IP address or host name of the PBX. In the example shown here, you can see on the highlighted side of the results that the route goes from node one to node two, then to node three, and finally to the PBX which is directly connected to Node 3's LAN network. The right side of each row shows that Traceroute gathers three pings as it traces the route to the endpoint that you entered. But three is a very small sample size, so it's much more accurate to get your average latency using the ping tool that we just described. Now you can trace the route from the other side. Phone number two is connected to node five's LAN network. So we see the route traverses nodes four and three before reaching the PBX. Keep in mind that routes can change based on changing network conditions, but Traceroute gives you a good snapshot of the path that your VoIP packets are going to take across the network. Once you know the route your packets will take, you can use the ping tool to measure the latencies between each of the hops. In the example shown here, there are eight hops in the network path, and I also included an entry for the processing time required by the PBX itself. For devices that are directly connected to the nodes, the network latency is negligible, so the majority of the latency comes from the time it takes to traverse the links between the nodes themselves. In this example, the latency between nodes 1 and 2 is 28 milliseconds, between nodes 2 and 3 is 22 milliseconds, between nodes 3 and 4 it's 27 milliseconds, and between nodes 4 and 5 it's 38 milliseconds. These latency numbers came from running ping tests between each of the nodes along that route. If we divide ping's round-trip latencies by two, and then add all of these one-way latencies, we can get an average one-way latency of 125 milliseconds. This tells us that our VoIP call quality should be okay for the connection between these two phones. But what would happen if we doubled the one-way latencies between the nodes along that route? Here we see that the total one-way latency is well over 150 milliseconds. These numbers alone tell us that we can probably expect VoIP call quality to be marginal or poor, with quite a bit of jitter and dropped audio. So how could we get better VoIP performance in a situation like this? One idea would be to bypass the PBX altogether and dial directly between the two phone endpoints. Most VoIP phones, as well as soft phones, will allow direct dialing by IP address. We might call this a serverless phone service. In this situation, the Arden nodes still determine the least cost route but if you have fewer network hops by going direct between phones than you did when going through the PBX, you should be able to reduce the total one-way latency. Not only could you reduce the number of hops, but you would also be eliminating a single point of failure in your mesh phone system. If the PBX server becomes unreachable across the network, then your whole phone system would be unusable. So there seem to be several advantages of direct dialing, but what's the catch? What are the disadvantages? If you eliminate the PBX, then you also give up all of those extra features that it could provide, such as short extension numbers, voicemail, call holds, and all the other nice features that we saw previously. 
But if you can do without those features, then direct dialing might work well for you. One other disadvantage of direct dialing is that you need to enter the exact IP address of each phone you wish to call. That's a lot of keystrokes with a lot of opportunity for human error and frustration. Fortunately, most VoIP phones and soft phones have a built-in local directory feature. The example on the left shows the local phone book on a Grandstream phone, but most other phones will have something similar. In this case, star 47 is prefixed to the dotted decimal IP address, which is entered using the asterisk character rather than the period. The example on the right shows the contacts list in a LinPhone soft phone running on a laptop, which is connected to an Arden node. In this case, we need to enter the remote phone's username, IP address, and port number. Most other soft phones will have a similar directory feature to help you keep track of phone IP addresses for direct dialing. As before, you can use the ping and traceroute tools on your Arden nodes to trace the network route and measure the average one-way latency between nodes. In this example, there are only four hops in the network path. The latency between nodes number one and number two is 21 milliseconds, and between nodes number two and number three, 29 milliseconds. So the average one-way latency is around 50 milliseconds. This tells us that our VoIP call quality should be fine for the connection between these two phones. But what if we double or even triple that latency? This example shows that even if we triple the latency, the call quality should still be acceptable. In this video, we saw that the typical client-server architecture using a PBX can increase the number of network hops and add latency, but that a PBX does provide many features that some emergency communicators might need. If you're going to use a PBX, be sure to locate it on a node that's within one or two hops of all of the remote VoIP nodes on your network. Try to keep the one-way latency between your endpoints down to 150 milliseconds or less in order to have acceptable voice call quality. You can use the ping and traceroute tools on your Arden nodes to display network routing and latency snapshots. One of the best ways to reduce latency is to minimize the number of network hops between your VoIP endpoints. You can bypass the PBX server by direct IP dialing between the phones, which may help if it reduces the number of hops and if you don't require the extra features provided by a PBX. Thanks very much for watching. Be sure to explore the Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network online documentation and check the Arden website for the latest software releases.